So, Lone Rider here. And uh, as an avid cyclist, you may imagine I'm not too fond of bikes from department stores. Uh, generally speaking, any bike is better than nothing. Uh, I like the idea of people getting out and riding. I like to ride myself. Uh, so, you know, on one hand, if that's all you can afford, well, it's better than nothing. But I think uh, a lot of people, if they thought about it, they could get a decent quality name brand bike, um, you know, used perhaps. Uh, and even if they had to maybe put a little bit of work into it, you know, inflate the tires, you know, adjust the brakes or something, maybe even replace one of the tires, it would still come out cheaper than a Walmart bike in the long run. Why? Well, a lot of these are poorly made and assembled. It's not just the, um, the part spec is, is poor. It's not just the, um, uh, the quality of manufacture or in some cases design is poor. Uh, it's that the assembly is, is lackluster. You know, the, uh, a bike shop bike is usually not only going to be made to better standards by the manufacturer, it's going to be assembled usually by a trained mechanic who knows what he's doing and has all the right tools. Um, if you go to a department store, you know, the person assembling the bike might well have been the same person who five minutes ago was stocking t-shirts or athletic shoes or potato chips on the shelves. Um, and they're not likely to have, um, you know, bike specific tools like pedal wrenches and metric allen keys and, and, and uh, cone wrenches and, and stuff like that. Uh, now that said, some department stores do have a service that they hire that comes around, basically traveling mechanics that uh, come around and assemble the bikes and then leave. Now these people obviously are going to know more about bike assembly um, than, let's say, the stock person at, at the store because they are in fact mechanics and you know they're probably going to have their own tools and whatnot. But they're also paid based on how many they do, and they're not going to... It's not like the mechanic at a bike shop who has to stick around and deal with that customer if there's a problem with the assembly when he comes back. These guys assemble the bikes, and then they go on to another store. Um, they have no relationship with the customer. They have no... Um, some of them might, in fact, be good mechanics and might even care about promoting cycling and, and you, know, uh, uh, you know, continuing continuing interest in cycling, but they really have no incentive to do a particularly good job on each particular bike. In fact, again, they're paid usually based on how many they do. So the idea is to do a whole bunch and then rush on to the next store. And they're not there to deal with the fallout if something is not done great. Whereas again, if, you, if you're the owner or mechanic at a local bike shop and you, your customer buys a bike, and there's a problem with it or something's not working right, he's going to bring it back and you're going to be there when he brings it back and you're going to have to explain to him why he paid good money for something that doesn't work. Which brings me to department store bikes. Um, I don't understand why people pay good money for things that don't work. Yes, they're usually cheaper than a bike shop uh, bike, but that's not because department stores are kind. Right? Businesses don't raise prices or lower them uh, because they're kind or mean. Uh, it's usually based on what goes into making that product and, and bring it to the sales floor. Um, obviously, there's a profit margin, yada, yada. But, um, you know, at, at bike shops, the markup is not really that high. So, you know, when you look at a bike at a bike shop and you say, well, that costs way more than the bike at the department store, it's not because the bike shop owner is gouging you. It's usually because it's simply a better made, better assembled bike. Um and I, I don't understand why people spend their hard-earned money on this because, like I said, you could get a used bike and it probably even if you had to, uh, um, you know, uh, replace a tire or, or do some work on it, it would still come out cheaper in the long run than a department store bike. Um, simply, I, I, I hang out at bike shops. I, uh, a good friend of mine owns one. I've been in bike shops that are really nice and, and, and you know, uh, run by people who know what they're doing. I've been in bike shops where... I honestly thought I knew more than the guy behind the counter. Um, I, I've seen all kinds. But the one thing that I have seen when I'm at a bike shop is people bring in department store bikes to get work done on them. And invariably, the amount of work they need is immense. You know, people might think, well, I'm saving a lot of money by buying a bike that only costs $120. No. Or maybe they get, you know, it's $69.99, blue, blue, blue light special or something. Yeah, you're, you're paying less at the outset. All the costs are hidden around the corner, right? The cost of, you know, one thing goes wrong when the bike is still fairly new. You bring it to the bike shop to get it fixed. You can't bring it back to 
where you bought it because the department stores don't have maintenance departments. So you bring it to your local bike shop, which hopefully is still there because if everybody's buying their bikes new at bike shop, at, um, at, at um, department stores instead of bike shops, you know, a lot of bike shops feel a financial pinch from that and they're having bike shops close it, right? So you can buy the bike at the department store for cheap, but when it breaks after a week or two of you know, hard use, if you're lucky it lasts that long, um, where are you going to take it to get it fixed? You can't bring it back to the department store. Um, well, you're going to go to your local bike shop. Hopefully it's still open, right? <laughs> Hopefully you haven't put it out of business. But then you go to your local bike shop and uh, th they look at it and they're like, well, yeah, okay, this, this particular part broke. Oh, and by the way, this is also wrong, and this is also wrong, and this is, I know, like, what? Uh, all I wanted you to do was uh, fix my rear derailleur. And it's like, yeah, but your brakes aren't adjusted, your wheels are out of true, uh, your hubs are gritty, um, you know, your, your front fork's on backwards, whatever the case may be. And um, the person either ends up really frustrated or, you know, and having a bike that doesn't work, because usually what will happen is the bike shop mechanic will be like, if I work on it, I have to fix all the other things that are wrong with it. I don't want, one, I don't want you to get hurt. And two, I don't want you to come back and say when something else breaks that it was my fault I didn't fix it. Um, so a lot of bike shops actually won't work on them unless they're allowed to fix everything that's wrong with them, which usually ends up, you mean you end up, the customer ends up paying more in the repair bill than they did to initially purchase the bike. Um, and some bike shop mechanics I know just, don't like working on them, period. Uh, they, they'll, they'll refuse. Um, the irony is I think a lot of people, especially people on a budget, and let's face it, we all have a budget, unless you're like the federal government, you can just print money. We're, we're all on a budget and we, um, we can't spend more than we have. But the, the problem is saving money at the outset only to then end up spending a lot more later in repairs, or worse, medical bills, if something goes really wrong, wrong while you're riding, let's say, on the road, and you fall under a bus, um, or, 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 you know, lose control because something comes off your bike and you get hit by a car. Um, and it's like, okay, uh, it's not just a question of spending more to fix the bike, it's now you, you know, now you have like $3,000 in medical bills, if, <laughs> You know, and, and, and miss time from work and, you know, hopefully you're not permanently injured for life. You know, like if you break your neck or something or, or te tear a joint badly. So essentially, yeah, you save a little bit of money up front, but you're losing mon potentially money in the long run. And you're going to have a whole bunch of other problems, you know, um, and potentially you could be injured. And, you know, there's that. Um what, what I find more sad, though, is just the, the impact on enjoyment of cycling. If somebody really wants to get into cycling and they end up with a bike that's heavy, poorly designed, poorly assembled, uncomfortable, and has mechanical problems, even if those problems don't rise to the level of the bike being unrideable or, or physically unsafe and causing them to have an accident, it's going to give them a poor impression of cycling and it's not going to encourage them to, to, to do it. Um, you know, if every time you get on your bike, you're like, man, this thing is horrible, it's uncomfortable, it's squeaky, it's heavy, it's this, it's that, you're, you're just not going to like riding it, right? Whereas if you get on a, a bike that's properly designed, properly sized for you, uh, has decent parts spec and is properly assembled, it's going to be smoother, it's going to be easier to ride, it's going to be more comfortable, it's going to feel more safe, um, and, and ultimately, at the end of the day, more enjoyable. You're going to enjoy riding your bike. You're going to be proud of the quality of your bike. And you're, you're, you're not going to be afraid to ride it. You're not going to be uncomfortable riding it. You're not going to be ashamed to be seen with it, right? Because it's not going to be a piece of junk. If you get one of these department store bikes, a lot of times, there are rare, rare, rare exceptions, but a lot of times, as a rule, it's junk, right? And the irony is, I understand if you're on a budget, you can't afford a better bike, but the thing is, you're ultimately probably going to be spending more in the long run. If you're if you really can't afford even an entry level bike from a bike shop, I would check the used market. Right? I I just I that's what I would do instead of getting a department store bike. And to illustrate this, I'm actually going to talk about this bike here because you might be looking at this and saying, "Oh, that looks like a mongoose uh, single speed bike from a department store." Yes, it is. And there's a reason that I have this here. Ordinarily, I wouldn't want something like this in my home at all. Just I 
you know, out, out. I don't, I don't want you here. You're, you're, you're a, a blight on the, on the property. But I have it here for a reason. I got it for free, and I decided to take it apart to see if I could turn it into a usable bicycle. Now, a friend of mine picked this up, I don't know, like cleanup week or something, and um, essentially it was a department store attempt uh, by whatever holding company now owns the component of Mongoose Corporation that sells bikes to department stores. Uh, it was their attempt to do a track or a fixed gear bicycle for the street. Uh, so you'll see it has uh, horizontal uh, track, rear facing track dropouts on the rear wheel. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that's that. I can't really talk about the components because those are all mine, which, I, which I'll get to. But when I got it, it came with these wheels. My God, have you ever seen something so revolting? Um, they're, the hubs aren't that bad, at least on this one. I think the rear one was real gritty. The front hub is, is okay. You know, when you take it off the bike, you can spin it freely. But my God, look at these spokes. First of all, it's radial spokes, which are kind of blah. But look how many there are. What is the point of this? This wheel weighs like an anchor. I mean, if you were a gangster and you wanted to send somebody to sleep with the fishes, you could like put two of these on their shoes and chuck them into the East River, right? This is this is better than cement galoshes or, or uh, concrete blocks. This is, we, we, we could call this a New York wheel, right? I mean, seriously, this is what the, this is like what the mom would use to send you down to the bottom with the, uh, with the car. It, it weighs a ton compared to a real wheel. Uh, you also note it's got a Schrader valve, like the valves on your car. Yeah, most, um, not all, some entry-level bikes still come with Schrader valves, but most wheels that are deep V-section rims like this are not drilled for Schrader, Schrader valves. It kind of defeats the purpose. Um, one, uh, the whole point is to have a narrow, somewhat aerodynamic and strong wheel, which doesn't mesh with having one that's really heavy and completely overbuilt and, and increased uh, non-aerodynamics from the number of spokes. But also, you can't get uh, replacement tires with long Schrader valves, generally speaking. So if you have a deep V-section rim, the first time you get a flat, how are you going to replace this? Well, what can you get with long valves? You can get Presta valves, right? Like most uh, decent wheels are made for nowadays. However, uh, this hole is really big. You could put a Presta valve through there, but then it, why make the hole bigger than it needs to be? It's just, it's poorly thought out, it's poorly designed, and damn, it weighs a ton, right? Uh, the hubs also are, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see that from back there, but it says Quando on it. Q U A N D O. Now, I don't know what that is in, in, in whatever language that is, but with the C, quando is Spanish for when. I, I guess the idea is when will my wheels be better? I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is this is a, a pretty atrocious part spec. I, I can't imagine. Let's just roll that off into the other room. I can't imagine anybody deliberately uh, choosing to ride a bicycle with those wheels on. Uh, the the wheels were so out of true that when I spun them, they had a, not only a visible wobble, in some cases they were hitting uh, the inside of the fork or frame. Just, oh God. Um, yeah, the less that's said about those, uh, any more the better. I think I covered all the bases. But what was interesting is the brakes that the bike came with all of these parts, from except for the bottom bracket, are, are mine. So, uh, you know, the seat, the seat post, the clamp, the cranks, the pedals, the, the wheels, the the stem, uh, the top of the headset, and all, all of these are, are my parts. So I can't really show you the originals because I threw them away. They were just, ugh. but the brakes that it had on it were so poorly adjusted. The brake pads were all the way down here. When you squeeze the brake, they weren't lining up with the rim. The rim was here, and the brake pads were down here, and they were going like this underneath the rim. It's like, well, okay, so how are you going to stop your bike? Leaving aside the fact that the wheels were so wobbly, they were they were hitting you know, the brakes, the frame, the fork, etc. Uh, then we had the uh, the cranks that were on there. They were 
like, they got like a cheap stamped steel flimsy ass chain ring, excuse my language, that was like, like riveted or something onto the back of the crank. And the cranks were really short. They were like um, shorter than 165, which is normal length for track cranks. Um, so God knows, you know, I mean, a normal road bike has between 170 and 172.5s. Mountain bikes usually have either 170s or 175s. Um, track bikes are usually 165, unless the rider's really tall. These were shorter than 165. I don't know what they were, but they were like, like off a kid's bike. But look at the size of the frame. This is not a kid's bike. In fact, if it wasn't a sloping top tube, I couldn't ride it. It's too big for me. But anyway, uh, then the, the brakes themselves were of such shoddy quality. They wouldn't, they wouldn't stay centered. When you squeeze the brakes, they would off to the side. Uh, I tried taking the handlebar off to replace it because the stock handlebar was solid steel and it weighed almost as much as one of those wheels. Uh, I figured I would just take the whole stem and everything off because I had my own that I was going to put on there. But uh, I couldn't get the stem out. I was sitting there I was like, it, it, it's not coming out. What's going on? Well, the top nut that they used on the headset was the wrong diameter. It's a one inch threaded steer, but the top nut they used is like the old Schwinn style or the, the old one inch BMX style, which is actually has a narrower interior diameter than a standard one inch. So the stem was jammed in there between that and the fact that nothing on this bike had ever been greased since the day of its conception. So it was bone dry uh, and it was jammed through the center of a headset top nut that was too narrow. So it was like friction fit in there. I loosened the, the wedge, the expanding wedge, but it wouldn't come out well, between the lack of complete lack of grease and that it was physically jammed into the, uh, the nut. I, had to turn, I turned it upside down. I uh, took a mallet. I actually had to make my own mallet for this. I cut a chunk off a giant uh, block of wood. So I ended up with a square thing about this long and I drilled a hole in it and uh, I, I had a, a thick dowel. I put that in there with some glue and made, I, I call it Thor's hammer because that's what it looks like. If you've ever seen the Marvel Comics character, it's this giant square head on a fairly short thing. But because it's a wooden mallet, uh, I could bang on bike parts without risking denting the frame if I miss or something. So I turned it upside down and I started wailing on the stem. And, uh, I don't know, like an hour, maybe 45 minutes later, and a lot of fracking elbow grease, I was able to get the stem out. <laughs> 45 minutes to an hour, just bang, 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 bang. Uh, what are they thinking? Well, somebody probably saw the top nut for sale and said, Oh, that's like a tenth of a cent cheaper. Let's order a whole bunch of those. That's like they never stop to say, well, why is it a tenth of a cent cheaper? It's a tenth of a cent cheaper because it's an odd size. Yeah, it's not what you need for it. And it's funny, I talked to my friend at the bike shop about this and he said the same thing. He said, they have some guy whose job is just to look at part spec sheets and prices and try to keep everything down uh, in terms of cost so they can make more profit on the bikes that they sell but they don't look at the overall components to see how they're gonna to fit together. They don't look, for example, at the external diameter of the, the specified quilt stem to see if it will in fact fit without jamming it in there through the internal diameter of the top nut on the headset. I mean, you think that if you're gonna order this piece and this piece and you know they're both gonna to have to interact with each other that you'd make sure they fit properly. But it's all about the dimes and nickels, I guess. Now. The end result was, again, I had to bang that out, but then I was stuck with, well, top nuts all chewed up. Um, I was gonna replace it anyway, because it was real shitty, but excuse my language. I uh, I replaced it with a proper one. I believe this came off a 1980s, uh, uh, it was like a, I don't actually know, a road bike of some kind. Anyway, I have a whole box of incense and incense parts downstairs. So I got that on there. I put my own stem on there. I put a short flat bar. This was just for around town short rides. Um, and then uh, my Ori grips, swear by these, and a uh, short lever uh, front brake with drillium, of course. Uh, then I put on my own wheels. This, I don't know, but this came off a, a road bike at some point. Uh, and then there's this deep V wheel I had lying around. Um, 
it's it had some incarnations, but it's it's set for a fixed gear on both sides. It's not a standard standard flip flop is fixed gear on one side and free wheel on the other. This has two different sets fixed gear, so I said awesome. Then I uh, put my own cranks on. These are Shimano 600, and they are uh, 165s, and they're worth more than the bike ever was when it was new. Uh, you have the anodized blue uh, chain ring there. I think that's a 44, 40, 46? I think it's a 46. Uh, then I had to see about the seat. Now these old BMX seats, I love these for sure. Just, you know, if you're gonna do errands around town and like that there, these are great. They're not all that comfortable if you're gonna be on the bike for more than let's say uh, 45 minutes or an hour, but they're great for around town and in foul weather, there's nothing, it's all plastic. There's nothing to, to get wet, uh, to, to get damp, etc. Uh, so I took this and I took a seat post then I tried tightening the clamp that was on there. No matter what I did, even though the seat post was the right size, I couldn't get it to tighten. I took the clamp off, turned out the clamp was too big. Oh, dealing with a real mind here. Somebody, I mean, who put the bike together? Curious George? So I, I rummaged run, run around in a box, got my own clamp, hodgepodge together a bolt from two pieces because I didn't have one that fit that clamp, put it on there, and now it's rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Uh, that's it. It's now it's a functional bike. I even put a little bell in there. It doesn't work very well, but uh, and I can ride this uh, stand over height is, is a little tight. You see the seat's not that high, but uh, it is possible for me to ride this thing. Uh, and the the only reason for that is that it's a sloping top tube. I don't have much tire clearance. I have about two inches of tire clearance. But um, it's a sloping top tube, so I can't ride it. Now, why did I even bother? Well, I don't have an aluminum fixed gear. And this was free, and it didn't cost me anything except some time. So I figured it's something to have if the weather's really crappy, there's salt on the roads, whatever. I don't feel like riding a bike that's actually, you know, that I actually had to pay money for. I can ride this because it didn't cost me anything except some time. But I also wanted to do it as sort of an experiment. I had never completely stripped down and taken apart a Walmart bike, Walmart bike before. And I said to myself, um, I wonder what that's like. I, I, like everybody else, I'd seen the problems with department store bikes, but I had never completely dismantled one and seen all the problems at ground level. So I was curious as to, you know, what, and it turned out that there was not a single part on this bike except for, for perhaps... I think part of the headset and part of the bottom bracket that I actually was able to use. I had to have my own cranks, my own wheels, my own seat, my own seat post, my own top part for the headset, my own stem, my own bars, my own brake, my own, you know, I even had to have my own seat clamp because the seat clamp that was on there didn't work. Um, it was an eye opener. Uh, now the only good thing about this bike is that one, I mean, if somebody jacks it, I'm not going to cry. I'll miss the Shimano 600 cranks, but I mean, it didn't cost me anything. The second thing is that because uh, the wheel is very far tucked under the seat, almost like you see on the old KHS aero track frames, which is probably the uh, idea they're going for, it has really short ch chain stays and, and it does go around corners really nice. Uh, of course, it also has this ugly as sin asymmetrical setup here, and God knows how sturdy that is or when it's going to fail, you know. Um, I mean, it's the frame is so heavy. I don't think it's it's going to come apart. Um, it definitely appears overbuilt in that sense. But uh, look at the sizing. This is the most poorly designed frame I've ever seen. Um, to have this much head tube here, uh, this bike should really be this tube should be down here, okay? Uh, especially considering it's shipped with pedals. Uh, with cranks, I should say, that were shorter than these cranks, right? And uh, you might say, well, you got it from a friend who found it in the rubbish. Maybe those crappy parts weren't original. Uh, no, I went online and I looked, and you could see at the time that these were, this was a year or so ago, you could see that these were being sold by uh, Wally Mart, and they had the same cranks and, and wheels and all that jazz on. So... Uh, yeah, it's just not a, 
not a good assembly and um, like I said I wanted to do it as an experiment I wanted to take one apart and see what it was like see how they were put together see what all the all the, the nitty-gritty was and what I what I have concluded is that anybody who spends their hard-earned money on one of these things is a fool now the problem is that some people again are gonna be like well I can't afford a bike from a bike shop all I can afford is a Walmart bike ironically those are the people someone who is that restricted budgetarily um, or poor in the vernacular um, you know is the person who can least afford to waste money so what they're enticed by the department store into literally wasting money on a bike that you know and I could see if you had something complicated maybe with suspension or something like that or lots of gears this is a single speed it's a it's a track bike. It's the least complicated mechanically bike ever invented after the high wheeler. It has the least number of moving parts. Like if you can mess up a track bike, like you can mess up anything. I mean, if you could mess up a track bike, you could mess up tying your shoes. It's just one of these things where I got to ask myself, what are people thinking, right? And I mean, I love cycling. I like the idea of people, more people on bikes. More people on bikes is a good thing. But when those bikes are substandard or even dangerous, um, it, it's it's going to actually turn people off to cycling. And, you know, if you have people who, you know, maybe aren't bicycling because they like it, but maybe they just need to for transportation. Well, ironically to them, it's actually more important to have a dependable, safe bicycle, right? Because they're not just going for a long ride on Sunday. They may be using it to get to work or whatever. I mean, some avid cyclists do commute as well. I did for, for several years. Uh, but, the you know, if you literally are riding just because you need a bike to get around for no other reason, you don't care if you're cycling one way or the other, it's still, it's still more important for you than, let's say, for the recreational rider to have something that's safe and dependable. Because that's like that's your main means of getting around. So the fact that these people were sold a bill of goods and buying these crummy bikes, I think that's that that's that's awful. I think that it's you know you're a grown person, spend your money wisely. Don't buy a department store bike. Like I said, the only reason I even have this in my home is because I got it for free and I figured it's an aluminum frame, it doesn't cost anything, it'll be a great beater for the foul weather. Um, that, that's it. But still, I mean, I had to spend a lot of time taking it apart, taking all the parts off, finding parts that would fit and putting them on. And, um, you know, that's down to the original parts spec being so awful that they either did, the parts that were on there either didn't physically work, period, or they were just so atrocious that I wasn't, I, I couldn't ever see myself using them. So, um, yeah. You know this this is now a real bike quote unquote and um, I don't think I've ridden it longer than 20 miles but I have taken it um, you know I've gone to do errands go to the farmers market get fill up my bag with a whole crap load of groceries and you know stuff like that there um, you know just short rides around town and whatnot um, if I want to go out just for a little while and it's say it's a light rain I don't feel like taking my nice steel bike out in the rain or whatever again it's for it's for crummy weather and like that there. So, uh, you know, yeah, it, it's it's usable and I'm kind of glad I came across it, but, um, you know, it's really too big. It's, it's poorly designed and the part spec was atrocious and the assembly looked like it was done by a bunch of drunk orangutans. So, you know, I, I don't know. Um, people need to really rethink. If you're one of those people who thinks, hey, look, you can get a great deal at the department store on a bicycle. No, okay, just no, don't do it. Um, it's not worth it. Long rider out.